Hello everyone, this is me Anur. In this video, we are going to solve a problem with vector force. So, let me read the question. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Conceptually, this structure is subjected to three forces, F1, F2, F3. So, we are asked to determine one resultant force and one direction. Okay? To tackle such a problem, first we have to determine X, Y, component forces for each force okay yet ya ke endemtay soost force wo challu selezi and resultant na and direction felugu na yetebal no matno ye resultant magnitude na direction selezi majemeriya minarago step mindinno leyand and force x and y component infelgalen matno okay now let us start by calculating the x and y components of f1 or force 1 okay but force 1 in jammer okay from the question F1 is perfectly horizontal force, okay? Therefore, we have only force in x direction, which is F1x, okay? This means force 1 in x direction, equals to 300 Newton, okay? Next, F1y. In this case, F1y equals to 0. In this case, F1y is 0. In this case, F1y is perfectly horizontal force. So, let's see what the x is going to be. F1 X Okay, next let us calculate the fourth components for F2. Okay, as we can see, force 2 is oriented a certain degree from the positive x axis with a magnitude of 400 Newton. Force 2 the more positive x axis the salasa degree orient to the In this case, this is the rectangular component of F2. Okay. If we consider only this portion and this vertical is going to be F2Y and this horizontal arrow is going to be F2X, okay? So let's see, vertical and horizontal force in our lemon because the force is inclined with a certain degree. Okay, now let us apply trigonometry and solve F2X and F2Y. So let's see, trigonometry concept apply by Madrak, F2X and F2Y magnet in Chalan Malatno. Okay. Let us consider cos 30 degree. If you consider cos 30 degree, cos 30 degree from trigonometry, cos 30 degree equals to adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay? Cos theta adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's theta 30. Therefore, cos 30 degree equals to F to X divided by the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is F2, okay, which is 400 Newton. By rearranging, we get F2x equals to 400 Newton times cos 30 degree. And this equals to 346.4 Newton. Again, if we consider sine 30 degree, sine 30 degree equals to opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay? Therefore, sine 30 degree equals to F2y divided by F2. In this case, F2 is 400 Newton. By rearranging, we get F2y equals to 400 Newton times sine 30 degree. And this equals 200 Newton. Okay, what's left? Finally, F3. Now, if you want to calculate the component force for F3, unlike F2, which was defined using an angle, F3 is defined using a small slope triangle. Okay? F3 and F2 by angular element is set small slope triangle okay which is much in this triangle alleged. this is the rectangular component of f3 okay therefore the small triangle and the large shaded triangle are similar in the method it's a thin short triangle not to look triangle and then it's natural right angle triangle natural okay by applying similarity of triangle the proportional lengths of the sides similarity of triangle that like man you want a proportion more that in general the side which let me say it F3x, this horizontal, divided by F3, triangle side divided by F3, equals to the side of the small, the small triangle, 4 divided by the hypotenuse, 5. This is proportional. Therefore, by rearranging, we get F3x equals to 4 divided by 5 times 215 Newton and this equals to negative 200 Newton. Why I'm putting a negative sign? Because the force is acting to the negative x direction. 
Okay. F3Y. Applying similarity of triangle. This side, which means the side of the large triangle, F3Y divided by F3, the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, equals to the side of the small triangle 3 divided by its hypotenuse 5. Okay. By rearranging, we get F3Y equals to 3 divided by 5 times 250 Newton. And this equals to 150 Newton. Okay, it's positive because it's acting upward direction. Now, finally, let us sum the forces in the x direction and in y direction. Okay? Therefore, the resultant force in x direction FRx, which means resultant force in x direction, equals to F1x plus F2x plus F3x. Hence, F3x equals to 300 Newton plus 346.4 Newton minus 200 Newton. Okay, don't forget this minus sign because it's acting to the negative x axis. This equals 446.4 Newton to the positive x direction. Okay, let us now sum the resultant force in y direction. FRY, which means the resultant force in y direction, equals to F1Y plus F2Y plus F3Y. Therefore, FRY equals to 0 Newton, don't forget F1Y is 0 Newton, plus 200 Newton plus 150 Newton. This equals to 350 Newton upward. Okay. Now we can calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay. Therefore, this is the rectangular component of the the uh, resultant force. Therefore, this is the FRY and this is FRX. Okay. Uh, now. If we take uh, this right angle triangle and apply the Pythagoras theorem, the resultant force is equal to under radical of FRx square plus FRy square. Okay, by substituting the value, FR equals to 567.25 Newton. Okay, now this is the magnitude of the resultant force. However, the question is magnitude of the resultant and it is orientation or direction. Therefore, to calculate the angle theta of the resultant from the positive x-axis, let us apply trigonometry. Okay? If we apply trigonometry, tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent. Okay? Therefore, this FRY is the opposite of this theta and FRX is the adjacent of this theta. Therefore, by substituting the value, we can get theta equals to 38.1 degree from the positive x-axis. This is all about this problem. Thank you for watching.